Okay, um, today is about, uh, about our prayer. Um, you know, uh, many times we question, um, you know, I'm a child of God, but why is my life not that different? And, um, you know, it seems like I'm receiving uh, answers to prayer, um, you know, from time to time. But, um, you know, it looks like, you know, everything is uh, God's time schedule. But, um, you know, you feel like you are not having the very clear assurance to wait uh, that absolutely uh, God's answers will come. Uh, that's when you, uh, f the first thing that you need to do is uh, think about the salvation that is already completed and is inside of you already. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Uh, think about this. Uh, what does it mean that I'm a new creation? Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Uh, that your old self has been crucified with Jesus Christ. So your old life is already dead. Amen? So only Christ lives inside of you. Right? Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 2. Uh, what does it mean that there's no condemnation? That means there's no curses and punishment of God in your life. Okay, so problems are given to you. Romans chapter 8, verse uh, 26 through 28. Problems are given to you inside of uh, that uh, 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 prayer of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ, uh, they are praying praying for you, okay? So uh, technically, you don't need any other prayer background in a way, because Holy Spirit clearly is praying for you. And uh, there are many passages in the Bible how Holy Spirit is communicating with Father God about you. So he reveals, he teaches God's plan, the deep things of God. He searches and he reveals it to you. And also he prays for you to God, okay? So everything uh, works for the good. Romans chapter 8, verse 27. That's why you are not a conqueror. You, your identity is more than a conqueror. And this is the uh, sense of identity that you have to restore uh, once again. So perhaps, you know, if God has a great plan of evangelism and important missions and, you know, ra uh, plans to raise up disciples through you, then God will not restore your faith through giving you answers and blessings. God will restore your faith through his word and then give you answers and blessings. Okay? You know, we usually to, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, what is it, uh, when baby is crying, you know, we give the baby, you know, uh, you know uh, sweets or candies or uh, not candy. You don't give candies to me, uh, you know, uh, something healthy <laughs> that tastes good to your baby. Um, but, you know, you don't do that to your, like, uh, when your son and daughters are like teenagers or college students, you don't give, uh, you know, you don't do that, right? You actually expect your children to uh, kind of grow and, you know, a uh, uh, step forward, right, wherever they are, and then that's when you actually give them uh, compensation or prize or awards, right? So same thing. So restore uh, who you are first through God's word, because God's word is God himself. God is the word and the word is God, amen? So God absolutely keeps his word. Uh, he kept his word. He sent Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ clearly said, it is finished. Yes? 37, actually. 37 to 39. And restore how you are in God's love. You know, you don't need any other belongings when you feel lonely. You don't need to try to belong to. No, you have to know that you're very precious and valuable. Choose your belonging groups. Okay? Don't try to belong anywhere. You know, you actually, you are in the love of God that cannot be separated by anything because the love of God is promised in Jesus Christ. So through that, that restore faith in your spiritual state first. Why? Um, if you restore it, you're going to, of course, um, disbelief will go away, and that's... Um, 
good to feel and everything, but um, not that. Uh, when you restore true uh, uh, faith in spiritual state through the war of God, this will happen. Accuracy. Accuracy is restored in your spiritual state. And when you are restored, when you restore the accuracy in your spiritual state, um, something will stick to you, stick. This is very important. It sticks to you, just comes to you. That's very important. Um, what stick, because you know, it's like a magnetic thing, your spiritual state is magnetic thing, so if you have disbelief, you know, disbelieving things stick to you. And, Right? But if you restore faith through uh, the Word of God, what sticks to you is absolute covenant sticks to you. Through what? Listen to this. Through worship. So... Um, I think uh, just look at look at you, look at you, and look at the people who are here. You know, this is the time schedule. Um, you have faith, and you you know you have life experiences and everything, but God's absolute covenant will stick to you, and this is God's absolute journey. God's plan. And this, what is this? What is God's plan? You know, what is God's absolute plan and God's absolute journey? Mission. Mission. Your lifelong mission, of course, there is God's lifelong mission because God has your God has a lifelong plan for you. But there is mission for each time schedule, each place, each time period, church mission. Okay, this mission, God knows, and God will give it to you through worship. Because worship, Exodus, I, I tell you, I tell you every time, right? Exodus chapter forty. Verse uh, 34 through 38, the very last passage of Exodus. Exodus is the book of the absolute journey, the covenant journey. Begins from Moses till, uh, you know, uh, right before the uh, land of Canaan. And it, it ends with the tabernacle. Upon the tabernacle, the worship place, the glory of God was filling that tabernacle. And glory of God signifies God himself because God is the glory. And he says that twice. So worship is the place in the covenant where God meets with you. And I want to tell you to have this worship, not just on Sunday, but personally, um, have a time of personal worship. So don't lose yourself in business, uh, um, busy lifestyle. If you can, if it's possible, reduce, reduce the work. If it's not possible, don't mind it too much. You know, just do your best. Don't mind your work because you're, you're just doing your work diligently. It's just a, just a basic thing. But that's not gonna, that's not gonna give you God's absolute plan. Uh, rather, you can just uh, be lost in a way. Personal worship to find absolute mission. What kind of mission? This is the standard of mission, okay? Standard. God's kingdom. God's kingdom coming upon wherever that is through you. So there is a small mission. Lydia, uh, her clients were these uh, really uh, rich women, you know, people who are in high class, because you know, she was selling the, the silk, right? So she had a very clear mission. 
It's not that she didn't pray for the beggars on the streets, all that. You know, she had a clear mission, you understand? So there, there is a clear mission according to your age and your occupation and your church position. Okay? There is no manual. There is no manual. Otherwise, why? Because uh, it's not fun. <laughs> right? New plan, new grace. And so if there is manual, the manual is to, to walk with God. The manual to walk with God. That's the man. This belongs to God. So what is true evangelism after this? Through this true evangelism. So um, even in our movement, people who, uh, for, uh, people for whom evangelism continuously just takes place continuously and peacefully, peacefully, and also uh, just uh, uh, quietly too, quietly, peacefully and quiet. That's very important. Wise as a snake and pure as a dove, right? Peacefully and quiet. If you, if you put your humanism into evangelism, it's very noisy and it doesn't continue. And after all the works of evangelism, some dark things start to happen to individuals. <laughs> I've witnessed that. Uh, but continuously and peacefully and quietly, those people are so thankful to have a very clear mission received from God in their daily life of worship, in their daily life of three, two days. Daily life of just following the flow. They may have weaknesses and spiritual problems, but they are the signals springboard to go into worship. So therefore, God gives them the weaknesses. So uh, when uh, God's true evangelism takes place, uh, in this time, you know, even for Pastor Yu, uh, it took him for three years when he was in charge of the church in uh, uh, Yongdo, it took him three years to, to do uh, uh, intensive training with all of his church members doing this for three years. And then after the gospel is restored and after all that puffy, uh, a fake, uh, 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 fake and a very, uh, these empty visions, empty ambitions and uh, useless conflicts and uh, 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 stubborn, stubborn self-centeredness uh, is healed and they restore the gospel. After that, they find the mission. Restoring the gospel is the Mount Calvary, okay? And this is what? Mount Olive. And as one by one restores the gospel and start finding their own mission, finding that Where they are is actually golden fishing ground. They come to a discovery. They see so much of potential of evangelism. Through what? Through their you know, family or occupation. Right? And then what they do is they start going out and evangelize. No, that's actually training. You go out and evangelize, that's for training. As evidence to that, all the fruits that happen from field evangelism camp, they don't really remain in the church or remain in the system. It's actually the people around you that God has prepared the eternal disciples and believers. Because there must be a reason, there must be God's reason for you to be in that family, in that region, and in that occupation, yes? People around you might be just few members. No, no, no. There are family members of your team members, right? Friends and team members. So sometimes evangelists 
they're always looking for a disciple because disciple will continue to evangelize, right? Sometimes, sometimes they, uh, they deceive people in a way to find the disciple through this person, through this person. So, you know, to, to, to discover that your life uh, field is golden fishing ground, that's completely eyes of faith, isn't it? Right? Eyes of faith. So these, by this time, this person's spiritual state has overcome the destiny, overcome the destiny of their past. It's not like they're just feeling good. They, are, they know that they're in a different, fa diff different phase in a way. I don't know why I'm talking about this today. <laughs> it's about prayer, but uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, I'm I'm aiming for this uh, time schedule, and uh, uh, waiting for this time schedule of the person in our ministry. So this year, I think uh, I'm really thankful that many <clears throat> types of Restorations happen to us. Restoration of worship. When I say worship, the depth and the atmosphere of worship, right? Restoration of following the flow of the word. Restoration of each person challenging or experiencing their personal prayer. Right? All that. So right now, um, as we prepare for the next year, uh, Satan might be... Uh, Picking on you and try to, uh, you know, uh, make you ticklish, right? <laughs> Here and there, <laughs> small and big conflicts. So you should not focus on getting rid of that. Focus on this: finding your work of God's kingdom. Amen. Focus on that, because there is. Your remaining spiritual problems will be taken care of when this problem comes, when this time Don't try to be healed completely. That's not how God. I mean, look at Simon Peter. He betrayed Jesus, you know, denied Jesus three times, right? This. When Simon Peter discovered this in Mount Olive, he completely changed in book of Acts chapter 3 and 4, right? Along with the mission, the content, God's going to tell you the time, time schedule. And time schedule, you could uh, read it in the flow of the word. That's why I am so, um, I am going all in and uh, in a way very sensitive to each sentence that Pastor Yu says. Each sentence. Time schedule. When, what. And then, okay, today's message is something that uh, not everyone can maybe understand, but, uh, um, but that's just that and just listen to what God says, okay? <laughs> and, uh, um, the happenings, when you are so focusing on it, you match, with, match the flow of the word with what's happening. What's happening in you, your family, and the church, and the field. Eyes of God. You know, eyes of God, if God has the eyes, they are spiritual, right? Because God is a spirit. So people who don't, uh, who are not interested in this, you know, what is God's looking at his time schedule and all that? You know, they, they are very focused on... Fruits and outcome and happening. They're very focused on this. So turn your eyes from this to this. Because um, my confession is the fruits that I want to experience now, now is 
I mean, I have experienced, like I told you, you know, about 400 to 500 acceptances in the, in, you know, in my life, in my high school years, college years, and, you know, many acceptances I have. You know, many people are prepared in the field, I know. I know that many people are prepared in the field, but the, the fruits that I want to, and God wants me to, God wants you to uh, experience, and you really have to experience this, is for you to become a person of 24 hours. And then what happens? And this is the evidences that will happen to you. Evidences that will happen to you. So don't try to make evidences. That's very important. You try to make evidences, there is your, your scar of the past in it, your ambition in it, your hastiness in it, right? No, no, no. You have a wrong focus. You sh your focus should not be on the fruits and outcome and happening. That's what non-believers do when they run business, right? So only, only what is done by God, what is done by God, the crippled man ri raising up, right? Uh, Simon Peter didn't plan, okay, after the 40 days of Mount Olive, I'm going to go to the crippled man. So when you actually read the Acts chapter 3, they, it says in Korean, like, they, they were focusing on the crippled man, right? They saw something. So what? Mission and time schedule, yeah? Mission, time schedule. Assurance. Boldly, right? So God, God will give it to you. That's the, those are the things that are kind of uh, 25 hours. And when this happens, listen to this. This is not the end. Your success of evangelism and your occupation, that's not the end. I'm, I'm aiming toward, towards this. This is, my, this is my desire. Eternal disciples. What good is it? If your field turns into disaster zone when you pass, pass away, hmm? what good is it? That's what I think. After I pass away, my church breaks into pieces and, you know, what good is it? It was all for my glory, isn't it? So my aim and greatest desire should be after I die, and who will remain and who will not be shaken after, after you die? Disciples. Your disciple? No. This, I told you in the youth message. Disciple of the word? Not my disciple. Disciple of the word and disciple of the gospel. Disciple of Christ. They're not going to be shaken. They're going to expand God's kingdom. Why? God's going to work God's going to do the work of 25 hours through them. Amen? So your mere evangelism is not mere evangelism. It should, you should see the end of your evangelism and end of your prayer. So don't, don't please, uh, don't be excited if uh, oh, evangelism is happening. Be thankful, but don't be don't be excited too much. So we don't have much time. <laughs> like uh, every week, we don't have much time. So uh, here, I said 24 hours, that means raising up the spiritual parties, and yesterday, Pastor, you said, church lay leaders, they should be the best at this. So make that your mindset. Out of all the things that I do, my best skill, my best ability is knowing how to raise up the spiritual bodies inside of me. If you make that a uh, beginning today, 
then you will understand what the seven partisans are, seven journey, and three signposts are. People usually who complain about, you know, what are all these things? They are the usually people who are not interested in them. If you're really interested in them, just take it one by one, huh? one by one each week. If you are doing that, 25 hours time schedule come, and God will raise up in your occupations and your region, God will raise you up. Skill partisan, what does that mean? People who are working with you, God will let them see the power of God through you. Okay? God let all the Israelites and King Saul to see the power of God through David. That's why God has brought Goliath in front of them. It comes. Why? This has to happen because God, is, what does it say? I will make you a witness. Amen? And because, why is this not happening? Because this, they're not doing this. That's why. So best, make a resolution today, a covenantal resolution. Make you making a covenant to God. God, I will be, out of all the things that I do, I will be the best at raising up the spiritual bodies inside of me with the seven bodies and seven journeys and three, three uh, signposts. And get to know them one by one, slowly and peacefully. Okay, slowly and peacefully. After this happening, God will make you a culture summit, culture partisan. And what will happen here, remember this, okay? What will happen here eventually is God will equip you with five powers. You will be the person with spiritual power, intellectual power, you can give guide and directions and wisdom to the disciples and you know, to your family. And physical power, financial power, absolutely financial power, so that you, we can actually do the movement. Amen? And also manpower. Not making your own disciples. You're going, there's nobody who will be my disciples. If, if they call themselves my disciples, my disciples, they're not my disciples. They are co-workers. We are all going together because we are all disciples of Christ. Visible, five powers. So this time schedule is waiting for you. This really hit me yesterday. Really hit me. So I'm not going to compare myself to anybody. You know, some people say, oh, David, you know, a pastor in your age, you are, you know, blah, blah, blah. You're complimenting me, right? And I'm like, can you just, I'm not interested in that. In front of God, right? David didn't stand before Goliath to be better than other soldiers. In front of God. So this, uh, this week, I'm giving you a message uh, mission to listen to the business missions message at least like seven times, okay? Seven times. This very, very important message. You or uh, newcomers might have the question, you know, how is it that uh, other religions, they receive answers and powers and you know, all these great things happen to heresies and cults? Same thing as Pastor you said in the first service message, you know, uh, I think that's the time schedule of Satan's plan. Satan makes an empire or a nation to arise, he lets, he gives power to them and everything. And then at the end, they perish because Satan's goal is destruction. Perish through what? Idol worship. Because 
when other religions pray or give idol worship, you know what happens? Satan comes. So idol worship, having an idol or going into deep prayer without knowing Christ, even if they are church core, they don't know Christ, but they go deep into prayer, Satan comes. So why does Satan make them to do the idol worship and you know, you know, spread, spread out all, uh, throughout the nations and all that? Because Satan wants to come with his demons to each region and each city. And that's what's, what's happening in Japan. Because why? When you worship, you're giving your spirit to another spirit. Satan comes. But if you are worshiping with the covenant of Christ and flow of the word, because war is God. God is the war himself. Amen? That's when God's spirit and his angels will come. Isn't that amazing? Satan comes. Satan comes or God comes. That's what prayer is. That's why prayer, remember, prayer is science. And the fact that you're a child of God, you have the rights and authority to what? To let the Spirit of God come and angels come. And when Spirit of God comes, God sometimes he does the miracles and, you know, looks like a revival. No, no, no. Revival happens after. Biblical evangelism. So you, so I don't know. For some reason, you know, after going all into the flow of the word, it's been about uh, over a year now, uh, almost two years that I've been going everywhere to where Pastor Yu goes and all that. <clears throat> God has been opening my eyes to see the time schedule of absolute evangelism. Absolutely. Even if the time schedule of 25 hours doesn't come to me in the time that we've been waiting for, I will not go ahead of the Holy Spirit. I will not. So I am very thankful because there are many people who are, uh, who are you know, communicating with me, you know, uh, having a word forum every day. I'm thankful that each, each and every one of you are. Um, I can see that God is healing you and restoring you. Because I'm not interested in evangelism. I'm interested in accurate evangelism. Accurate. Because I, 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 have, I have experienced it. I told you. I have. I mean, 400 to 500 acceptances, if you experience it, you, can, you could tell what's accurate and what's not. Okay? To make the fruits and outcome, that's all, that's all for the people and for yourself. And, and it's not going to go long. It will go down. When you move ahead of God's time schedule, it will go down. And when it goes down, it will hurt many people with disbelief. So we have to pray. But in the meantime, um, Um, if anybody needs uh, for me to come to you and wor have worship and forum and give you missions, uh, please let me know. October and uh, November. And uh, we'll see uh, uh, what are the plans that God has for it. A lot of time has passed. Uh, let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that you have spoken to us. I pray that we will aim not for the answers, but for the eternity. And we will be a disciple of Christ and disciple of the flow of the word. 
not my own thoughts and my own comfort and my own calculations and my own ambition and my own success and be the person of prayer so that we can experience and you can use us to raise up the eternal disciples, disciple of the flow of the word and disciple of Christ. I pray that you will give mercy and grace to upon those uh, upon us so that we will not be deceived by what we see, what we hear, and what we feel, but we will have God's word as the standard and be that strong vessel that will not be shaken. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.